So last week was the Community Game Jam, a huge game dev competition hosted by us and a bunch of cool other guys. The idea is simple, you get one week to make a game from scratch. And we got a staggering 1100 entries, which is just absolutely insane. I of course also participated myself, so here's how I made a game in one week. But first, this video is sponsored by Ecred Music. When making a game, mechanics and graphics are essential, but just as important is audio. Ecred Music is an AI-based music creation service that lets you tailor music for exactly the mood and style you're going for in a matter of seconds. Start with a scene, mood and genre or a combination of these and with a simple click on the create button, the AI will put together a unique music track for you. With a solid base already, you now have the possibility to structure your track and even change out instruments, which makes customization extremely easy. With a simple license, you can download unlimited royalty-free music that you make with the tool, which means you are free to use and publish it in any game you might be working on. So get started making customized music by simply clicking the link in the description. And if you use the code BRAKIES, you will receive your first month for free. Now, the theme for the jam was the game is a liar. You're a liar and a thief. Which immediately reminded me of an old browser game called Cyberburn Action or Cat Mario. It's known for its incredibly frustrating levels because it tricks the player by having seemingly harmless objects killed without warning. I gotta do that! Are you serious? This has always kind of intrigued me, because there's something really fun in a game being so totally unpredictable. So after some quick brainstorming, I booted up Unity and started by setting up some simple player movement and creating a level with two platforms, where the first one is a normal platform and the second one simply lets the player fall through. Now this was fun, however, I quickly realized that while the unknown is interesting, it would probably be best to give the players some way of discovering some of these hidden traps without dying every single time. So to achieve this, I implemented lie detection glasses that the player could control with his mouse and use to reveal the true nature of the game. At the time, I wasn't totally sure the best way to go about creating this mechanic. I played around with the new lightweight custom render passes, but after a while I ended up creating a custom shader, which I was actually pretty pleased with. Of course, I later found out that Unity already has a built-in feature for this called sprite masks, which I could have just used and saved hours of work, <clears throat> but that doesn't really bother me. It's all part of the learning process. Now with this mechanic in place, it was time for some graphics. I wanted to pay tribute to Cat Mario by keeping the graphics incredibly simple. And of course, Mario-like. I used the tilemap system for the environment and set up a quick example scene. I also created the first draft of the main character, who I decided to name Detective Truth. Now I really wanted the player to feel like he could see behind the scenes of the game, so to really help sell the effect I made the lie detection glasses cut a hole in the background and placed a grid pattern similar to what you see in Photoshop when there's nothing on top. This was a genius idea that I cannot take credit for. It was a good friend of mine that came up with it and in fact I haven't mentioned this but we completely packed the office with friends during the jam who all wanted to participate, two of whom made their first games. I cannot recommend this enough. Not only is this great for bouncing ideas off each other and helping out with technical stuff, it's also just a huge amount of fun to get together with other people who share a common interest. So getting back to development, I implemented collectible coins as well as a panning camera that would kill the player when he couldn't keep up. I feel this really added a sense of urgency to the game and forced the player to think on his feet. And that was pretty much the end of day one. For day two, I started by creating a list of everything that I would like to add to the game. I then created a power bar that would limit the use of the lie detection glasses. If it got all the way to the bottom, the glasses would overheat and you would have to wait for them to cool down. I also added a death counter and then it was time to do some level design. Luckily, because I'd set everything up to use the tile map system, this was as simple as drawing in the blocks that I'd like and choosing whether or not they should be real, invisible or visible but not really there. I also did a lot of work to make the shaders display which blocks did what inside of the editor so that I wouldn't end up confusing myself more than necessary. I then added some deadly spikes and a blueprint effect that would appear when searching over objects that aren't really there. I created fake coins that would reveal themselves to be spiky balls and spiky balls that were really coins that you could pick up. I created fake platforms, fake spikes and even fake ground that the player could fall through. In fact, at one point in the level, the player had to walk through a bunch of fake ground in order to continue, which was pretty confusing. At the end, I had a fairly long level and wrapped up the day by creating a coin counter and with a bit of playtesting. 
<laughs> the next day, I jumped right into graphics and added a death animation as well as an end screen. We thought it would be funny to have the player win if he got to the bottom of the truth. As in, literally, have an arrow point to the bottom of the truth. Yeah, we were running on a questionable amount of sleep. I then animated the player character and had the idea to have him turn into a skeleton when searched. The effect ended up being pretty unnoticeable and probably not worth the time, but I personally kind of like it. And by now it was time to add some audio. This is something that I've skipped for some of my recent game jams because of time restrictions. But this time I felt that I was pretty well unscheduled, so I jumped right into Busca see this program and drew up a quick theme. Not the most advanced thing in the world, but it would do. I created a list of sounds and proceeded to run around the studio in search for things that I could smash together to create cool and interesting audio files. You can really get a long way with household objects, your voice, pitch shift and a bit of EQ. And of course, it's a good idea to make sure no one is around since you sound really, really stupid while doing it. In fact, we all scrambled to different parts of the studio to get a bit of privacy with the microphone. Finally, I loaded all the sounds into Unity and set up a quick audio manager to play them when triggered. And I actually think they turned out alright. Now day 4 was submission day for me. And when playing through the game, I couldn't help but feel that it lacked something. It was just a bit too static. So to fix this, I created cannons that would fire bullets that the player had to avoid. I think this definitely added a new dimension to the level, which I'm really glad I got to include. Plus, it led to my favorite moment in the game, which is when the player has to figure out that one of the cannons shoots fake bullets that are in fact platforms the player must use to complete the final jump. I love this because not only does it turn the normal idea of a bullet on its head, it also forces the player to do a skill jump that I personally thought was pretty fun. And with that, it was time to submit the game. I had some of the others do a quick playthrough to make sure everything was okay before exporting and finally hitting the publish button. I think it's safe to say that I was pretty happy. And all the others managed to complete their games in time as well. I'll of course have a link to all of them in case you want to check them out. And while you're at it, make sure to check out and review all the other amazing entries. We're planning to do a separate video on all the jam games, so get ready to see some awesome games. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Also don't forget to check out Ecred Music to easily get started creating your own music. Simply click the link in the description and get one month free using the code BRACKIES. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in August and a special thanks to Infinity PPR, Dennis Sullivan, Lost to Violence, Love Forever, Chris, Faisal Marify, Leo Lissette, David Lipka, Runin, Daniel Desanik, Jacob Sanford, Naoki Wasaki, Gregory Pierce, Daryl Suniga, The Mighty Zeus, Addison the Fierce and Erasmus. You guys rock!